Hi everyone! Now, I fear this is going to be not quite up to my usual standard for the video this week because I really haven't got a lot of time. I have to um, switch my rooms. As many of you know, there are three bedrooms in my house, so one for my parents and then two for the three of us to share. So what happens is um, we switch off. And the room switch is happening today because we have guests coming every other weekend until like late August. So so we have to switch. So as I said, I won't really have time to do any of my usual, usual features like, you know, the news and all that stuff. Um, but I do have something, as always, that I want to kill this week. Well, technically not kill because he did do some pretty great stuff, but definitely a punch in the face goes to Justi Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes. Yes, that's right. Get ready to hear me rant about the Buck versus Bell decision. The basic idea of the case was that there was this law in Virginia that the so-called feeble-minded women could be sterilized. There was this whole eugenic science coming around and everyone was saying, oh, criminals and retarded people and people with disabilities and prostitutes, that's all genetic. So we should just sterilize all the women and then we get rid of the problem. So Carrie Buck was condemned as feeble-minded, as was her mother and her illegitimate child, who, by the way, she didn't get because of anything of her own fault. She was raped and that's how she got this child, Vivian. So anyways, she was committed to this colony, and the law of this colony was if you were a woman, you had to be sterilized. So she challenged this and said, no, that, that's ridiculous, you can't take away my reproductive rights, and the case went to the Supreme Court. So what happened? Did the Supreme Court do the only reasonable thing and say, of course, this is, eugenics is ridiculous, you can't sterilize women? No, they did not. Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes wrote this ridiculous opinion. I'm just going to read you a couple of quotes from it. In order to prevent our being swamped with incompetence, it is better for the world if, instead of waiting to execute de degenerate offspring for crime or letting them starve for their imbecility, society can prevent those who are manifestly unfit from continuing their kind. Three generations of imbeciles are enough. But that's barely the worst of it. This was all happening in 1927, and eugenics was a relatively new thing. But then, this case, Buck versus Bell, was what Hitler's lawyers used to defend him at the Nuremberg trials along with all the other Nazis. You'd think that that would be enough cause for the Supreme Court to overrule its decision. But no, it has never been overruled to this day. In fact, in two cases, Skinner v. Oklahoma in 1942, the Supreme Court, though it did somewhat limit the scope of the decision, Oh, by the way, limiting the scope means saying that you can't sterilize someone for stealing chickens. Literally. That's what the decision said. But they still reaffirmed. They said, well, you can't do it just for stealing chickens, but it's still, but Buck is still a perfectly valid decision. Then, more recently, in Povey Lynchburg Training School and Hospital, which was in 1981, the ACLU brought the case back and said, can you please overturn Buck? And you'd think, of course, well, shouldn't they do that? No. All they said was, you have to provide appropriate med medical counseling and inform the women of what's happening to them. But, but then there's even more. It turns out this guy, Paul A. Lombardo, did research on the case long after everything was over and realized that actually... The lawyer that was supposed to be defending Carrie Buck brought no witnesses to in her defense, and he was actually in support of the other side. He had all these secret meetings with the lawyers of the opposing team, and he made a terrible defense for her because she wasn't even really trying. Plus, her daughter Vivian, who they said was supposedly an imbecile and feeble-minded, as it turns out, she was on the honor roll at school. She was really smart. It was just that they put her in this colony for the feeble-minded, and so she got sick and died at age 8.
Um, so, by the way, I realize now I'm not being entirely fair to Justice Holmes because there were a lot of other people that deserved a punch in the face. For example, all the other justices who agreed with him. And, in fact, only one justice dissented in Buck v. Bell, but that justice didn't even write a minority opinion. So, a punch in the face also goes to...